Hello class. We have recently been going over some scientists and the discoveries that they have made. And today we are going to go over a man named Alexander Fleming and the discovery of penicillin. Does anybody know what penicillin is used for today? No? Okay, well, I will tell you. All right. Alexander Fleming's birth and family. Alexander Fleming was born on August 6, 1881 at his parents' farm near small town of Darvel, Scotland. His parents were Hugh and Grace Sterling Morton. Alexander was the third of four children, although his father had had a previous marriage with four other children. When Alexander was just seven years old, unfortunately his father passed away of an illness. Education. Fleming attended Loden Muller School, Darvel School, and Kilmarnock Academy before he moved to London. While in London, he attended Royal Polytechnic Institution. After four years of working in a shipping office, he inherited money from an uncle and enrolled in St. Mary's Hospital for Medical School. Um, In 1906, he qualified with an MBBS degree and began research at St. Mary's under Sam Almroth Wright, a pioneer vaccine therapist. Wright was interested in the way our natural body's ability to fight off infection. Fleming was fascinated by the way that natural defenses prevent an infection from taking over the body. So in 1908, he graduated in St. Mary's with a degree in bacteriology and received a gold medal for being the top student. That same year, he became a lecturer at St. Mary's. In 1914, Fleming served as a captain in the Army Medical Corps during World War I. During his Army years, he gained even more interest in the human body's natural ability to fight off infection. He conducted experiments to find out the antiseptic agents that were killing more soldiers than infection. All right. Army experiments. Fleming discovered that antiseptics were better at treating superficial wounds rather than deep wounds. Fleming believed that saline solution, however, was best at treating deep wounds. However, other Doctors refused to change their ways of using antiseptics, which made more people die quicker because they did not use the saline solution like Fleming had uh, thought. Okay. In 1919, Fleming returned to St. Mary's to complete his research. In 1922, at 41 years old, Fleming discovered a new bacterium he called Micrococcus lysodecaticus M. lutus, for another name, after culturing nose secretions of a patient with a head cold. When Fleming had a head cold, a drop of mucus fell onto the bacteria. The bacteria where the drop fell was immediately destroyed. He tested this with other bodily fluids and found out that bacteria would not grow where the bodily fluids were placed. The common factor in these fluids are enzymes. He named this enzyme lysozyme. Lysozyme. Filming knew that lysozyme had little to no effect on microbes and that that would affect the human body. He wanted to discover an antibiotic that was more powerful and wouldn't harm the blood cells. So Lysom uses today. Lysom can be found today in food and wine preservatives. It can also be found in egg whites to protect the baby chicks. Another use is in medicine in Asia for head colds, athlete's foot, or throat infections. The discovery of penicillin. After enjoying a nice long vacation with his son, Fleming came back to his lab to discover that the petri dishes that he found, or that he had were contaminated 
by um, an open window out of the lab. So they were moldy and nasty and he thought they were contaminated. Um, the sum tips found on the dishes were Staphylococcus bacteria. Fleming decided to grow more of the fungus and soon found out that it produced bacteria killing agents. And on March 7, 1929, Fleming formally named the antibiotic penicillin. All right. Fleming published his work proving that penicillin killed bacteria found in pneumonia, scarlet fever, meningitis, and diphtheria. He also found out that penicillin didn't attack white blood cells and it was safe to ingest. The scientific world ignored Fleming's discovery because of a new problem such as it was difficult to isolate the penicillin from the bacteria and it was slow acting. Fleming continued his work of penicillin through the 1930s and in the 1940s a team at the University of Oxford scientists led by pharmacologist Howard Florey and biochemist Ernest Forrest Chain transformed penicillin to what we know today. In 1945, Fleming, Florley, and Chain won the Nobel Prize for Medicine. All right, here are a few facts about penicillin. Penicillin is the first antibiotic to be used medically. There are multiple penicillin strains used for different medical applications. Penicillin works by interfering with bacteria cell walls and less than 1% of the population is dangerously allergic to it. So what does penicillin treat? Well, it treats skin infections, ear infections, dental infections, respiratory infections, and uh, urinary tract infections, and a lot more. However, penicillin will not treat a cold or the flu because those are from viruses. <clears throat> Here are some Alexander Fleming quotes. I'll read these off for you. The first one says, it is the lone worker who makes the first advance in the subject. The details may be worked out by a team, but the prime idea is due to the enterprise, thought, and perception of an individual. The second one is, one sometimes, find what one, is looking, one sometimes finds what one is not looking for. And lastly, it is the lone worker who makes the first advance in the sub... Well, I'll put that one twice. Overlook that one. I meant to put another one. Okay. Here are some personal facts about Alexander Fleming. Fleming's older brother was also a physician, and he encouraged him to become a doctor. Fleming had a reputation of being very messy. His workplace was messy. His lab was messy, and that is the reason, partly, of why penicillin was found. Penicillin, or Fleming worked in a battlefield hospital during France in uh, World War I. His discovery of penicillin saved millions of lives. Here's some more facts. In 1915, Fleming married Sarah Marion McElroy, and they had one son together. And in 1944, Fleming was knighted as Sir Alexander Fleming. In 1949, unfortunately, his wife passed away. But in 1953, he remarried a woman named Dr. Amelia Portsosori Borreca. And on March 11, 1955, Fleming passed away of a heart attack in London. And here are the references for this presentation. Does anybody have questions or comments about Alexander Fleming and penicillin? Okay, that is it.